So today's video is going to be a first impressions, kind of like a wear test. I know a ton of people have already done this video, but it was really requested. I'm going to be trying out the new Urban Decay All Nighter Waterproof Long Wear Liquid Foundation. I'm going to apply this to my face for the first time, I've never tried it, and then I'm going to wear it throughout the day and I'll check back in later on at night after a significant amount of hours and I'll tell you guys if it did last all night or not. I definitely should have started this video earlier, it is 3.30. It's like nighttime. I'm sorry. Even though it's 3.30, I'm gonna wear it for about eight hours because I feel like that is somebody's typical day. Or even if it's an all-nighter foundation, if you're going out at night and partying all night, I would say eight hours is a good time to test a foundation to see if it lasts. Okay, so I was actually gonna try out this primer for the first time today because I just got a Kat Von D PR package, but I don't want this to alter how I feel about the foundation. So I'm gonna use a primer that I know I already love and works for me, but this Kat Von D Lock It Hydrating Primer Base is calling my name. I cannot wait to try this. I tried it on the back of my hand and it feels amazing. I'm gonna go in with my Glossier Priming Moisturizer. This does not affect the longevity of my makeup, which is why I'm using it today. It's just a hydrator. Like I have certain primers that keep my makeup on longer, but I wanna make sure that this foundation stays on my face because it's supposed to, not because of the primer. And I need to put on something moisturizing underneath my foundation anyway because, well, you already know why. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with the Urban Decay All Nighter Foundation. If you don't know how the numbering works, everything that's point zero, point zero, <laughs> anything that ends with a zero is a warm toned color and anything that ends in point five is pink toned. But now they came out with this shade that's 3.25 which is a neutral undertone, which I'm so excited that they're doing. I wish they would extend that to every number, like 4.25, 5.25, I don't think they do that, which they totally should because not everybody is yellow and not everybody is pink. Some people are a little bit of both, like me. I have a neutral to warm undertone. Sometimes foundations look like mustard on my face. So Urban Decay actually sent me three shades, and when they sent me the three shades, two of them were 0.5, so they were way too pink for me. I didn't notice this color before in the PR package. I thought all three of them were pink tones, so I went out and bought the shade 3.0 because I am this specific shade in the Naked Skin Foundation. I think I'm actually gonna try the 3.25. This does oxidize. I have swatched this on the back of my hand and like within five minutes, it's like two shades darker. So I'm a little bit worried about that. I don't know how it's gonna look on my skin. I haven't tried it on my face. I'm gonna do one pump. It looks a little pink. Maybe I should just do like a little pump of the 3.0 and then I'm gonna mix it. I prefer putting on um, foundation with a beauty blender, but I've heard a lot of people say that they like how this foundation applies with a brush. I don't wanna put too much because I hear that this has a lot of coverage. So I'm gonna do this side with my beauty blender. Actually, this isn't a beauty blender. A lot of you guys recommended that I should try the sponge from Amazon. I completely forgot the name of it. Uh, yeah, I completely forgot the name of it. But, whoa, this has a lot of coverage. Whoa, I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna do my nose too, might as well. So yeah, I forgot the name of, I think it's Beauty Junkies. No, 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 I, I don't remember the name of the sponge, but I got it on Amazon. And it's actually pretty good. Very reminiscent to the Beauty Blender. It doesn't suck up a lot of product. It doesn't look cakey on my face, but it looks cakey around my nose. And I kind of saw that coming because anything that says full coverage, whenever it touches my nose, it looks so cakey. But I will zoom in and I will do all that in a second. You see, like it's looking already darker on the back of my hand. So the finish with a sponge is really, really pretty and it doesn't look heavy or anything. It looks very, very natural. So now I'm gonna try this side with a brush. I have a feeling I'm gonna prefer the Beauty Blender. You definitely only need one pump. I did a pump and a half just to mix colors, but there's still so much product on the back of my hand. A little goes a very long way with this. I look crazy right now. Okay, so immediately I 100% prefer the side with the Beauty Blender. It looks less cakey. Applying it with a brush, I, I don't like it at all with a brush. 
it looks way too heavy. So I'm just gonna go over it with my sponge. Okay, so this is what the foundation looks like on my skin. I think the color match is good. It does oxidize at first when you're blending it out. It is lighter, but it does set a little bit darker. It feels like I have nothing on my face. Like when I touch my face, it does not feel tacky whatsoever. I have felt foundations that feel even powderier, so it's not like a super matte finish. At least I don't think so. Like it doesn't feel too dry. Now I'm gonna bring you in closer just so that you can see what it looks like a little bit closer. So this is what it looks like up close. Excuse my little stash here. It didn't really sink into my pores that much. I didn't even use a pore minimizing primer. It looks a little bit heavy around my nose. That is my biggest pet peeve when it comes to foundations. Sometimes if they're too full coverage or too heavy, it will look cakey around my nose and in between my eyebrows, but it doesn't look bad in between my eyebrows, like at all. So that was my skin more up close. It definitely looks Flawless. I will say this isn't a foundation that you look at someone's skin like hmm Are they wearing foundation or are they not? No, I mean you could tell I'm wearing foundation. It's a full coverage foundation It's to be expected and I also have a really big problem with foundations creasing right here in my smile lines Happens all the time and this one is already creating kind of like a little dent right here, but it's okay It happens to me all the time But anyway now I'm gonna finish the rest of my face makeup and then I will be right back Okay, so I just finished the rest of my face makeup. I kind of sped it up and showed you guys what I used more or less. But yeah, it's looking really good. I really like how my bronzer blended. Like, I like how everything applied on top. There was no patchiness or no streakiness to this. I didn't set my entire face with powder because I didn't feel the need to. So I just set the areas that I applied my concealer and it just, everything blended awesome. Like, I'm really liking this foundation so far. The only downside is the cakiness around my nose. Oh, let me do a flash test. Almost forgot that. That is the weirdest smile. I don't even know what I'm doing there. But yeah, with flash, it looks really good. Maybe just slightly lighter than the rest of my body because I think my foundation is just slightly lighter than the rest of my body, but there's no white cast with this foundation. So nice, nice, looking good. But yeah, now I will wear this all day and I will update you guys at the end of the day how everything turned out. Hello there. It is really freaking late. It's 12.53 a.m. Pretty much one in the morning and the only reason I'm doing this update so late is because I just finished watching the Marlin game against San Francisco. It ended up having like a billion innings and now is when the game finished at 1 a.m. But I've had this foundation on for about nine hours now, which is a pretty good time. My um, bronzer's still on, my blush is still on, my highlight's still on. And usually those things are the first to go, so I'm really, really impressed. It's lost a little bit of coverage throughout the hours. Like, I can see my vein. But for the most part, the foundation is still on besides my nose. Like, the foundation has completely rubbed off on my nose. I'll zoom in in a second, but that's to be expected because... Celine really likes to lick my nose. It settled into my smile lines a little bit throughout the day, but nothing like dramatic. I'm actually pretty freaking impressed that this is what my skin looks like after nine hours. And yeah, I mean, you guys know I have dry skin, obviously. I don't really get oily throughout the day, so keep that in mind. I have to say that I like this more than I thought I was going to because I was hearing so many people with oily skin rave about this. So I thought it would be too drying or too cakey for me, but it's not only around my nose, but I can make it work. I could do things to make it work. Really, really loving how it looks after a full day. And I took a fat nap also, I forgot to mention that. Maybe that's why it kind of rubbed off a little bit here. Let me zoom you in. 
Okay, so in the viewfinder, my nose doesn't look that bad. In person, it actually looks worse, but it looks pretty good. I gotta say, I totally approve. I was even laying down on a blanket and it didn't really transfer to my blanket. Like I didn't notice foundation on my blanket. This definitely isn't a foundation I would wear day to day. I like something more dewy, more lightweight, and not as full coverage. But when it comes to full coverage foundations, I don't like many, but this one, I'm liking. I give this a thumbs up. But yeah, that completes this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that it was helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next video. Bye.